Hey everyone, Dylan with the HD Perspective, and today I've got the Milwaukee M12 Red Angle Die Grinder. I've had this tool for a few months now, and uh, I've used it a fair amount. I've got a good feel for how the tool works, and uh, overall I would say it's okay depending on what your use case is. I wouldn't say it's a replacement for an air die grinder. Um, especially if you've got a lot of, if you've got to use your die grinder for several hours at a time, like sometimes I do, I do a lot of removing paint, I guess. I rebuild small components, hydraulic pumps and motors and cylinders and stuff like that. So a lot of that I've got to remove a lot of paint uh, when, when we tear them down. And so in that use case, I wouldn't say this is a good, a good tool to get. But there are other use cases, like if you're at home and you like to work in your shop at home and you don't have a big air compressor uh, to run a die grinder, then this would be a good option. Uh, there's some pros and cons, definitely. The battery life, I would say, is is pretty good. Uh, they'll, they'll last, you know, I would say probably about 20 minutes or so on a charge. So I know a lot of guys, especially on YouTube, were singing this thing's praises when it first came out. And even Milwaukee themselves, they were saying how much force you could put down on it and uh, how much more power it had than a regular air die grinder. Well, uh, it was a little bit misleading uh, in my eyes. Um, the tool works. Um, it's not as good as, as an air die grinder. It's not a direct replacement, but there are its use cases. I would say that my biggest gripe with this tool is that when you overpower it, it cuts out and then you have to release the trigger and pull the trigger back in again. Whereas, you know, with an air one, if you stall out the cutting wheel or the buffing disc, whatever, as soon as you let off some pressure, it'll start spinning again. This one, you can let off the pressure, but you still have to reset it by pulling the, or releasing the trigger. So it's kind of tedious, I guess, to use in that way. So I'll just do some buffing. See? And then it cuts out. And you gotta release the trigger. And then you get You don't have to push that hard on it. If you got one of these guys, it's probably about the same amount of power, but can't really run this on a small air compressor. Okay, so here is some cutting. And it cuts out, so then you gotta release. So you gotta go with really light, really light pressure with this thing. So, I don't know, if you're using this thing professionally, it's almost unusable, I would say. Uh, if you're just tinkering around in the garage, it's fine for that. I mean, you've got the four settings on here. I would say one, two, and three. Um, like maybe if you're doing some really fine, intricate work, you'd want to turn it down to one. Then it just spins. It spins a little slower. Two, five, three, three four. There, we're through. <laughs> yeah, if you ever worked on a trailer with air brakes, you know what that is. So I guess the question to be asked now is, would I buy this thing again? And I would say probably yes, but only because I like to tinker around in my garage 
work on different projects and I don't have a nice big air compressor to feed a regular air die grinder and so this is kind of the next best alternative. So in that use case it's good but if you're gonna use this every day all day uh, I would probably still stick in with the air one. That's the my thoughts on the Milwaukee 90 degree die grinder you know in some cases better than nothing but still not quite there yet but it's a step in the right direction if you like the video don't forget to hit subscribe and leave a comment down below talk to you in the next one